Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is RK Stumbling Bear. And today I want to talk about Fireheart Tiger by Alia de Baudard. This is a new 2021 release and actually came out in February, which is the month that I read it. This book follows the Princess Tan, who has been asked by her mother to head up negotiations between their country and a another country that has more imperialistic is more an imperialistic empire and what is unique about this is time for a while as a child and young woman spent time or she was she was like a live-in hostage in this other empire and has only recently returned home so i kind of have some mixed feelings about this story there were some good elements, and then there were some other elements that I don't think worked as well for it. At least it didn't work for me as the reader. But I might not have been the intended audience either. Um, this is a fantasy short story novella or novelette. It, it's 160 pages, which was not what I was expected. Which was not what I was expecting when I got it. For some reason, the description and the name, the reason why I said, yes, I want you to read it, I was thinking it was going to be longer than it was. What always really gets me with the story is the characters. And for this one, I gave the characters an 8 out of 10, um, especially Tan and Jiang. I really, I really liked both of those characters. Everyone else seemed more one-dimensional. So the reason why this is actually so high is because Tan was that great of a character. I really enjoyed her. And now for the atmosphere, I didn't really feel a strong connection to the place, to the palace where they were at. And so I gave this a 6 out of 10. I mean, honestly, the story could have been dropped in anywhere. Like, it could have been in outer space and... I would have got had that same level of sense of atmosphere, the mood or the prevailing tone. It just, that was something that it was lacking for me as a reader. Now, I really enjoy the writing, and I will be reading more by Aliette de Baudard, so I gave it an 8 out of 10. The writing of what I got was great. The reason why I couldn't give it higher is because this book, story starts way too late. Anybody who is who writes, you're, you're always told you want to start the story late and get out early. That is a common thing, but there can be too late and too early. And in this case, the story feels like it is the last couple chapters in a book or a longer work of fiction. And they keep referencing things from earlier, but we don't get that in this. And so those things that are being referenced don't have the same impact on us, especially when it comes to the reveals. So while the writing is beautiful, the story does lack from not having more content, from not being a longer story. So, I mean, this is a short story novelette sort of thing. Even if, it, I mean, this didn't have to be a full novel, but maybe a novella would have been more appropriate. For me, I would have liked the story to have started with the fire in Yosopolis that was referenced continually. And I believe even the book description, or the Goodreads description, talks about this other palace burned down. And again, we're only getting, like, Tan as she's thinking about that and it misses the emotional weight by not ha getting to experience that with the character at least that's how I felt and that's why I couldn't give this writing a higher mark even though it's great writing so keep in mind for the things that I couldn't give it higher I still gave an 8 out of 10 which is really great now for plot I gave it a 7 out of 10 just because it seems so predictable. Like, it seemed we have to hit this point, and this point, and this point. And the execution of the plot 
the page or the book is 106 pages and I did not feel compelled to finish it in one sitting. Actually, I read this over two days. So, I mean, that's where the plot failed for me. It didn't keep me invested because I, when I put it down, I'm like, oh, well, this is going to happen next and this is going to happen next. And I was okay with waiting to finish it the next day. So for Intrigue, I gave it a 6 out of 10. Kind of with the plot, everything that was happening. Again, not getting to experience the earlier events that are referenced takes away a lot of what is happening. Or takes away the, in the bite, the wrapping up of what is happening in this story. So for Logic, I gave it a 6 out of 10. Because Tan seemed to make decisions that were not connected with what she knew to be right and what she really desired. There was too much back and forth and not enough. Yeah. It, it just, it seems she goes, well, this would be nice. Oh, hey, it, it, it's before me. I should do this. Why? I mean, it, it just, it didn't make sense to me. So for me, it was not logical. Again, this is where, I mean, as a reader, I do put a bit of myself into when I'm reading. And sometimes I can't get past what characters decide to do. It's one reason why as I am growing older, I read less YA. Or, no, it's, it's more I enjoy less YA. Because the logic sequence for the characters drive me nuts. But when I was a teenager, I completely understood that logic form. So it's just a type of logic that doesn't make sense to me. And that's why I, I couldn't connect with it. And then for enjoyment, I gave this a 7 out of 10. I liked it well enough that I, was, I finished the story. And that was kind of it for me. Again, being 106 pages kind of helped as well. It's like, well, I might as well finish it because it's a, this isn't a long story. So for Fireheart Tiger, this book ended up being a three-star read for me. Again, I will read more by this author because I did enjoy the writing style, but this specific story did not work for me very well. It was more okay. So I will continue to try out Elliot de Baudard. So if you have read anything else by her that you really enjoyed, please let me know so I know what next I should pick up. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye.